and uh, he he was as good at that as anything I ever seen. He uh, he you know he he wasn't he wasn't wasn't never what I'd call a trained dog. He didn't know what come in meant, and uh, <laughs> or get back or nothing else. And I, and, but he, uh, uh, he 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 did his job. He did what we got. Which male out of the Schooner River line was the best reproducer, in your opinion? I have my own opinion. I don't see if it matches well, up to yours. Well, you know, it's on who somebody had one that did good out of my. Because I'd have to, I'd have to, I'm bark, I'm bark. But I'm gonna tell you, uh, the, the boys that had the power pack dog over in Georgia, I, I'm gonna say he'd have to be looked at, you know. And uh, the, what about home, Hubs Homer? Being a reproducer, best uh, reproducer. Homer, you know, Jarvis had him and different ones had him. Oh, he, oh, he, uh, uh, Jarvis, Jarvis never did breed him much. Then when, well, Peony got him, uh, he bred him a lot. And, and no doubt, he, no doubt as far as, uh, number of pups he had, I think he had 400 and something pups. And, uh, and he, he's, uh, he, they, you can look at the figures on him, you know, yeah. ain't no doubt he was, he was, a, and see, he was a, a grand pup out of, his mother was out of Homer's Gomer. And his daddy was out of Schooner River Lipper, so he. Uh, you don't get much more Lipper than him. Uh, I mean, much more. Uh, you, get, you don't yeah. get much more Schooner and, River than uh, him, do you? And uh, all, all the thing, I think a lot more people had bred to Homer, but he was so ugly. <laughs> you ever seen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, he he was he was an ugly child. And he was an accident, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the way I understood it, yeah. Yeah. But they DNA'd him, and that's you know that. No doubt he's a good reproducer. <laughs> But uh, the dog, the dogs I had, well, I, I, you know, I have some things about Bart because I bred Bart, and I think he got about fourteen hundred pups, and I bred him so much more than I did the others, and my, I had a lot more interest in breeding at that time. Yeah. Too, but uh, he is uh, in the PKC uh, Tree and Walker Hall of Fame, also. Hubs Homer, Homer, uh, no, uh, Bart, Bart, yeah, Skinner yeah, River Bart, yeah, and also uh, Hardwood Homer by Keith they is in there him. also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Keith Keith Medley had it. Yes, and then Schooner River Fred is also in there. I don't. I don't believe Schooner River Lippers in there. What about Fred? Did you ever get to hunt with him or anything? I never did hunt with Fred. Never, never did. did hunt with him. Fred Fred was a, everybody. Everybody said he was really, really an impressive tree dog. Huh? And you know, I think. I mean, I I'm probably wrong about this, but as far from that generation of dogs. He might have been the only Schooner River dog that was ever collected back then. I mean, I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure about that. I, I don't know. Uh, the, the Johnson boys said they, could, yeah, uh, said they collected the uh, bark. Oh, did they? Okay. Well, I, I didn't. I, I, I don't know what they ever did with it. And, and Mark, Mark has collected reject. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't know about the others. I, I never was much on collecting. Back, really, back at the Time I was, had, had had them. They weren't having a lot of look, getting good litters of pups, you know. And I didn't want to mess with. It. Now we talked about this on the on the previous episode. And it made a lot of sense. Tell me why you don't believe in collecting dogs. Well, number one, if a dog, if a dog is bred and he doesn't reproduce something that uh, that you would uh, like to hunt and so forth and to breed. Uh, my theory is he probably shouldn't have been bred anyway. And uh, there are exceptions to the case. You know, some dogs are not bred enough to tail and, and you know, that. But uh, just a dog bred as much as bark. And you now if uh, if he doesn't reproduce something that's, that's uh, and uh, if I was looking for a stud dog, you know, me personally, I, I would definitely look for a family bred dog, you know, Eric. I don't. And do you think that was one reason that, Hubs Homer outcrossed so well because he was so tight bred. Well, you're right. I think, I think he was about as tight as you could get. Yeah, there you go. A mother, a mother son, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe that. I think he right. was, yeah. And he was even more than that. <coughs> Homer Schomer was, uh, was uh, uh, Raccoon Valley Queen's daddy, see. And 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 then Lipper was his daddy, see. Yeah. So, and best of my knowledge, old Bart, just looking at his papers, uh, Schooner River Lipper was on the top side, and in three generations, it was on the bottom side uh, also. See, yeah, Schooner River Lipper was the the mother, the daddy of his grandmother on the bottom side. I'm going to get me a drum. You know, <laughs> need you a little pigeon stick. What a... <laughs> and that's... Can I, I want to ask some questions. 
<laughs> Mr. Wimp, I just want to know, like, I've known of fellas that would make a cross and it'd be an outstanding cross. So they would try it two more times and not get nothing to match the first cross. I have no answer for it. <clears throat> With this exception, the smart people tell us that uh, our, our dog uh, will probably produce uh, seven, eight hundred sperm counts, you know, uh, where the female might only do a dozen or so. And uh, and which which group of the, of the sperm counts you're going to get would, depend, would be the only thing I could think of would be the difference in them because I personally think that Mama has more generation after generation and litter after litter. I think Mama has more to do with it than Daddy do. Hey, y'all. Tyler here from Coonutton University. I want to talk to you a little bit about extreme dog fuel and what sets them apart. Superior nutrition at the lowest price possible. So they've been told the amount of vitamins and minerals they use in their feeds overkill and that they could reduce cost by incorporating less expensive ingredients in their formula. But they believe the right mix of important ingredients makes a huge difference in your hound's skin, coat, performance, durability, health, and longevity. They promise they'll never change their product to lower the price or to compete with cheap commodity dog foods. All their ingredients are taken from the South Central United States. So go check them out and you can find out more about Extreme Dog Fuel at ExtremeDogFuel.com and find a retailer near you today. Extreme Dog Fuel, feed it for life. And if you're looking at a female... You know, the females that you've had that you said were really great reproducers, you know, were they out of litters of good coon dogs? Were the whole litter made good coon dogs well, rather than one good coon I, dog? I go back to Queen Five, and she was the only survivor in the litter. Okay. So, uh, so you didn't really uh, know about her, huh? Queen Eleven reproduced well, but she wasn't a good mama. She she just would raise you a puppet to you, and you, and you couldn't really tell about her. I, I don't know what I could answer that. You yeah. Know. I, just, I just didn't know if you had seen that correlation out of, you know, rather a dog that's one, this outstanding dog out of a litter of duds. You well, know. I, I, I guess probably does a toy of clean toy was bred to repeat, what, five or six times? Four or five. Well, I don't know how many, but several times. I know she got 40, 40 something pups at least. And, and she was only bred to repeat, never was bred to anything else. And, uh, and I'd say the, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell any. Could you tell the difference, Mark, in the last ones and the first ones? Probably was more out of the last litter. Well, they probably the first litter had a real good chance, and they they they, they was nine of them, and they over half of them titled. But uh, the I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't. They 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 about the same, you know. About uh, even even the litters vary a little, you know. But I mean, yeah. the, all of them were pretty strong in the bush. See? How does it make you feel to see all these dogs that have that go back to Schooner River do it being so successful in today's time? You know, you take Bone Collector, Power Pack. You know, they all have Schooner River in their bloodline. How, how does that make you feel well, to have I, that? I, I, I appreciate it, and uh, but you know, I realize it's uh, it's other hunters. You know, that had, had the big thing to do with that, and uh, and I, I just I appreciate the people being interested in them because I've been interested in them all my life, nearly and. Uh, and actually, I, I appreciate other people joining in and what they can. But uh, you know, it's it's left it's left to other people now. I I I I I'm gonna try to keep something to coon hunt. And that's about it. I'm planning on raising a couple of litters of pups this year. But planning and doing is two different things. You know. Have you thought about the stud dog you're going to use yet? I've thought about it, but that's you know all I, I know. And I bred the the 15 gift to Mark's dog last time, and we we got several of them. So I don't know. Don't know what I'll do. Uh, it'll probably be a mistake of what I do, but anyway. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I, I, so, I'm not going to go with that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have, I, have prom I have promised some of my buddies to say that I'm going to raise a litter or two. And, and they're, they're, just, they're, no, they're no dogs to be had around here, puppies or nothing else. And we, we barely. If some of these youngsters decide to go to coon hunting, well, they, I'd love for them to have a, have a dog to hunt. Yeah. We'll move on, shift gears a little bit here. Tell me about all the memorabilia that's in this building that we're sitting in. I mean, it is literally a... I, I've got some books right up here. I'll give you the dates on them. Them books right in there. Yeah, that was that first full cry you gave me? No, no, no. no I'm talking about some old books. I have a book called Coon with Cooners. Uh, that's a 
1924 model. I believe it's right. That is to coon hunters who have so faithfully read. 20, 20. I think it looks like wow. 1911, but I'm not sure. It looks like 1911 where you got your thumb. I, I have a book by Mr. J.E. Williams. He was up around Raymer, Tennessee. Had a kennel up there some years ago. And the date on it is 1911. Did, now, do you have a idea of how many of these books were printed? I have no idea. And then you got And, and of course, I have a walk with Wick, uh, yeah. first edition. <laughs> That's impressive in itself. I think it's probably worth $1,500 now, as much as they're going for. You also have the first full cry magazine ever. I have a copy of the first uh, 1939, as far as I know. It's the first first full crowd. And and starting when it's, you said 65 is when it really all your magazine, you know, you start really having them from I, then. I have, I have most of them from, from 65 on. I have some before then, you know, this and that. And I have a, a 49 full crowd and a 59 full crowd. And then I don't know which different ones. But the early ones, of course, was American Cooner and the full crowd. Then I, I think I have all the UKC magazines, and they, uh, and I have all the PKC magazines as far as I know. And and you have all, I mean, just pictures upon pictures. You have a picture of Hank Williams Jr. with a plot doll. I have a Hank, Hank Williams <laughs> picture of Hank Williams Jr. with his plot over this uh, over this folks clubhouse some years ago. Hey man, that's awesome, and Mr. Eddie, you. You actually found a picture that you had been looking for that you took, right? Yes, it's a silver dollar favorite, which was Schooner River favorite, when uh, my buddy Richard Owens bought him from Mr. Wimp. And I took a picture in 85 when uh, Richard had him and we hunted with him, but Miss Sharon and Hope, and uh, Hope wasn't even thought of, but Hunter and Shay is in the picture with Richard and Miss Sharon, mm -hmm. and I took that picture many years ago and I, I found that dude and uh believe me good memories that's awesome that really is i mean it's, it's so much history here yeah favorite favorite i still remember him well because he was one of one of his nicer pups i ever had i, I sold him to ray jernigan uh, uh preacher up here and, and ray and richard was good friends and uh richard he sold him to richard and he had a powerful mouth, and I'm yeah, telling yeah, you, he, he was, was a nice outfit. He he was he was pretty close up in Moose's pedigree, you know. He and even I thought Moose I always thought Moose favored uh, favorite thing, you know. And I see a picture on the wall of Homer's Gomer, and if anybody remembers that dude, they remember what kind of track and tree dog and what kind of mouth he had. It's good to see a picture out of old Homer. The little locket jib, she, uh, she she did me well, and then she also reproduced Pick Pack Pickles, which uh, did well in her, her day. Now, you were talking about the Silver Dollar favorite dog, and tie, did he tie in at all with like Silver Dollar Cracker and all them? Or no, or I saw he was Schooner River favorite. Okay, and I, I sold him to Richard. I saw so and Ray sold him to Richard. And Richard, that was his kennel name. Okay. That's where he got the silver Did dog. Did you ever breed the Silver Dog Cracker or any of them? I bred the uh, Cracker. Daddy. Crockett. De Crockett. Okay. Cracker's Daddy. Yeah, I bred him twice and, and got real nice pups. I, yeah. I, I, I liked what I got. You, you handled Silver Dog Cracker, didn't you, Mr. Eddie? Or uh, hunted Crockett. I hunted, Cro you hunted I Crockett. I hunted with both of them, but I yeah. did uh, hunt some, Crockett some, and one with him. And Ronnie Wayne mostly hunted uh, Cracker. He won a bunch of money with the Cracker. It, it's just awesome. And I just, so you have all this history in here, but what's the biggest changes that you've seen in the sport? Well, one thing, it's dropped off. You know, we, if I was a sport coon hunters, you, know, you, you have very few that, People that's not connected some way of competition that's even coon hunting anymore, you know, as far as this pleasure coon hunter. And uh, most of the people I've hunted with, well, if I visit them, I have to visit the cemetery. And that, that's the main thing I miss about coon hunting is uh, is the people, you know. And still talk still talk to a lot of people, and I enjoy that. I, you know, it's, it uh, got it one time where, I was doing more talking than I was anything else, but uh, 
it's it's now it's not bad and i i enjoy talking in them any way i can help well always glad to do so because they people people have been really nice to me i i hear people have stood dogs that talk about how people mistreat them and i can't say that because the people people were super nice to me some of them did want me to get up a little early but other than that well we made it fine uh, going back through this, uh, 2000 is when Pick Pack Pickles won the national championship. Mark Cross and Terry Walker, the gentleman that owns the American Cooner, our good friend, they owned her. That's awesome. It really is. And and what do you feel like has been the greatest achievement? 88. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know, but I have been blessed because I don't remember a time in, in the last lots of years that I didn't have a dog in my pen. I catch a coon with some of them are better than others, but I and and like like I am now, I can't hardly get across the road ditch, and uh, and I got dogs and three coons, and, I, and 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 that's the that's the first and foremost. They 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 got a tree coons or or I don't feed them. That's just about the and they. And, and I've been blessed to all these years, you know, to have something. For even the 16 months I spent in Korea, I left a dog at my mother and daddy's at, uh, with Tree Coon. So uh, she, she she had a few other habits, but she with Tree Coon. Do you feel like dogs of today are better than the ones back in the day? 100% better. They know no comparison. Up to date. Uh, the dogs are so much better today, yeah, you know. You can find, if you know what you're looking for, you can kind of find what you want today. Uh, and and back, back when I started with walkers, it, 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 number one, you couldn't find one a tree. Uh, they just didn't treat you, that's all. What about from, say, the 90s from t- till today? They're still better, you think? They, they, they're smarter. They are. Uh, they, there's some breeds going in different directions, you know, and s- some people are trying to try, trying to breed something to win the world with, you know. And uh, the country we got to hunt in, and the way I hunt, and the way I can hunt, I can't hunt. I can't hunt a dog that's uh, that don't don't hunt with your cattle and, and handle, you know, and stuff. That's that's very important. And the uh, dog dog got today, even some of them that I don't care about much, it, it's still got a lot of scent. Most of them are. Capable of learning. I don't have any good instructors we got, but you know, the, the dogs are still, a lot. A lot of them are capable of learning. How old is a puppy when you start, say, putting a handle on him? Oh, uh, usually pretty young. I, I uh, the most six month old pup I got out there, I started messing with him a little bit already. He, he's not developed enough to really jump in a pickup like he probably should yet. But the quicker he does that, well, I'll turn him loose around here. And have him to load several times a day, you know, till we get it down right. I've heard stories that uh, Mark's told me. I, it's my own fault I hadn't come and watched it, but he told me you could uh, hunt four dogs off of a horse and have two behind you uh, yeah. watching those trail and tree and never get out from behind that horse. Go to the tree with those type tree dogs you hunt and turn them back a loose and the two behind the horse never move and then when it gets those two behind the horse's I, turn i i had when i hunted when i hunted uh some of the some of the older ones uh they would they would do that i hadn't i hadn't rode a horse in several years so these now would probably bark at a horse but uh, I, I, and, uh and and bark he was he was he was good at he would he would he was well disciplined and his mother and grandmother they were well disciplined and you you were talking about like bark yeah, obviously, he seems like he's probably your favorite male you ever owned, right? Yeah, no, no doubt. He, he, I, I never owned, you know, a whole lot of males to choose from, but he, he was, he was, he did, he did pretty good in a stud pen, and he, he did, uh, he, he did good. Bark, Bark, he was well disciplined. He had a good mouth, a good tree dog. You never see him have trouble with nothing. He, he was just a pleasure to hunt. Well, and and I had his mother and his grandmother, which they were older than him, and uh, I hunted them three, probably as good as three as I ever hunted, and uh, at one time. How uh, how independent were they? Was he? Uh, Bart Bart was well. They were they were all fairly independent. They were more independent than a lot of the hounds I've hunted. You know they because they would split tree and hole and that kind of stuff. 
I'll see them, I'll see them three, three different places, you know. And we caught all them coon, me and Bradley the, and the Delta. They, several times, they was treating three different places. Let me ask you a hypothetical question, and uh, if you want it out of there, uh, Tyler can take it out. With this Queen 15 out here you have now, if somebody called you today and said, look, Wimp, I've got some semen on bark, would you be interested? Oh, I say it into the mic, man. <laughs> I, I would definitely be interested because, as I said, I, I like bark. And I don't know how many times she's got bark in her. But uh, I don't think one more lick would hurt. So if somebody called and said, Mr. Wimp, I'm going to let you use this bark semen and we're going to raise us another litter of puppies, you're in. I would I would definitely die on it. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question, Mr. A. That's probably the best question we've asked all day. He kind of, he kind of, he said, ooh, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of puckered up a little bit when he said, hey, so if anybody listens to this knows, know if Bart was collected, which I don't know. You got any good stories you could tell us about hunting with uh, Schooner River Bart? Well, probably one of my favorites, uh, me and, Avery Adair was hunting in the game here one night, and we had Bark, two of his puppies, and Queen Ten. And uh, you were lucky to catch two coons down there in a nice hunt. And uh, we were riding horses. We looked at 13 coons and shot 12 of them out. And one time they treated just side by side and they didn't shoot that out. And... Uh, we got pictures of the hunt there, you know, and it's I, I hadn't had that good a hunt down there since or before, but we we had a, had a, had a nice one, sure we did. What's the most memorable hunt you've ever been on besides that one? If that's your most memorable, they don't even have to be a dog. At the time you hunted one of your dogs, you could hunt, be hunting with some other dogs. I don't go many hunts without my dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I I ain't hardly going no much without my dog. <laughs> No, uh, sometimes I would, I would have been hyped for a man been at home. Uh, 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 this will be something that may come out, may stay in. You was at the 67 ACHA World Championship in West Point. What was that like? Look, look right there and get them two uh, red things there. Right? Tell us what years is on them. He's got, he's got the... Uh, 67 and 68. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. You were there. What was that kind of like then? It was it was really a special event, you know. They were uh, walkers were just you know beginning to get really popular, and uh, uh, they were the merchants and the, the houses. And, and I remember one dog in particular, Texas Slim, was there. He was a single register walker dog. And by the way, he was uh, the first old queen I had's granddaddy. The daddy, uh, a pup out of him was bred to sailor to get him. And uh, and uh, Felt like he could make him make him heal and sit, and he had a crowd following him, uh, making his dog sit, and he would sit and lay down, and I don't remember what, a few little commands, you know, and a lot of us had ever seen a hound dog, you know, you know it's common knowledge that a hound dog would doom, you know, and uh, and I, I remember that being a really attraction. I I got it, uh, Merchant with banjo too. Somebody else went along, but I can't remember who. What was. kind of tree dog? I've always heard uh, about the tree style of banjo uh, and banjo the banjo, too. The, the banjo dogs split treed, and I remember they they run the tree as high as they could and grab it and hold the tree coming down. <laughs> they run that tree and hold it and just just slid down. They were they were barking, they they were they were barking circus at that tree now. But they look you know they t- took a lot of room for them, but uh, it uh, they were. They were three dog. I believe that was the year that Merchant won second with Johnson's banjo. Well, what uh, what about uh houses Tom Tom? Did you ever hunt with Tom? Never Tom? hunted with Tom Tom. Very what about boy, Diamond yeah. Jim? Diamond Jim, I hunted with him one time, I guess. Diamond Jim, for, his, for my measurements, he left here barking and tree coons, you know. What about Finisher? Well, Mister Gans, he he's not worth us anymore, so I. I and uh, Robert McCarley won't get mad at me, <laughs> but finisher. What I seen out of finisher, I I, I I didn't see anything out of him. I bred a jip to him with well, a first queen to him, and she didn't have no pups. And I always told him, "Lord, to see and ask me." <laughs> <laughs> what about Billy? Crown Billy. Crown Billy. I, I I never I never bred the Crown Billy. I hunted with him in Memphis a time or two. 
he was crazy man. He, he, I didn't know. I didn't know what he was doing, and I, uh, only, only Buddy could tell you what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> he called him William. I remember that yeah. sometimes. Uh, yeah, only only Buddy could tell you what Billy was doing. I honey with uh, Pride's other dog, Buck. Buck, and he was a tree dog. Was a really a nice. You put him in pen oak acres, and where I was him one night, and he 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 looked like a cool dog. So I believe Pride had the worst luck at getting reproducers of anybody I ever seen. So I I, I raised a litter out of Buck, and they didn't had none of them turn out. What did everybody hunt back then? What was the big breed? Well, I'd say most people that had the choice was was father Mr. Merchant because he was back in the you know back when he was hunting Baldy because he was winning everything in the you know well, in the world. Well, but uh, I, I'm meaning as far as like you said, Walkers were just then get started. Yeah. What 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 was the big breed then as far as like blue ticks? What what was everybody hunting or was everybody hunting oh, more? Black, black and tans because you know most people were hunting. Sangler registered and you know great dog with papers on them and everything else and and black and tans are dominant color so you know uh, if the first first litter or two I ever raised out there Lottie Jip there she had a black and tan or two you know and uh, you could get black and tans that's really an early walkers a blanket back walker like we got now people didn't like them because they said they had black and tan in them and they they want an open spot at walker they they want I'll show you the I got one up there that won 20 bench shows. Uh, she She's very spotted up, too. Why or how did the walkers be, go from not even being able to find one in this country that would tree a coon to being so dominant today? I mean, because let's be honest, it, it, they are it, dominant. It, it was over a lot of years. It was over lots of years. Well, why don't why didn't the other breeds do that, you think? I don't know. Most people that had other breeds didn't like walkers. It, it kept getting, the, you know, one man would move in, and one the first queen jip I had, I hunted with a many a person. Said that's the first tree dog walker they ever seen, and that was in sixties. Uh, so you ain't liking no tree dog walkers now. They don't say that now. <laughs> <do you? laughs> they want them to track now. Is it? Yeah, Mister A, do you even remember a time when walkers weren't dominant like that, like they are now? No, not not in my time. Now there was people in the black and tan breed, the blue tick breed, mm-hmm. that were awesome. But uh, as far as numbers, uh, you know, there's uh, I never knew of a time in my time. Yeah, I, I believe, and I'm not sure about the date, but I believe it was '63. I hunted in the uh, Louisiana State Championship. I was on the walker in it. I hunted, uh, they hunted close to a hundred dogs. Really? Yeah, I was on the walker in it. We we had a crowd going with us. They want to see a walker tree or coon. And did they see a walker tree nah, coon that night? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then what year did the the gray dogs be passed by? Because I remember even in my time showing up at a hunt, there was a lot more gray dogs right, than there was right. registered. And uh, you know, UKC required a long time for you to have a gray cast. You know, and uh, one. Popular dog, my dog has several crosses. I mean, it's Crawford's boss, and he wasn't known far and wide, but he was. He won tenth place in the ACJ World Championship in the sixties. But didn't know they didn't know sure what all he had in him. But uh, he was really an outstanding little coon dog and a good boy on him. But he he never to get bred. You know, I bred him to the Angie twice, and you get a puppy too out of each litter to do something, and that's about it. Huh? And that. That's just mind blowing for me to think that it, that was the case back then. Now walkers, and it's just crazy that the other breeds didn't. You know, I mean, if they were so dominant back then, or, or numbers wise, I'm not saying. But and then now it's like, what you go to a hunt, and you might you're lucky. I'm not saying anything bad about blue ticks, but but I mean, you're lucky to see a blue tick or a black and tan at a hunt. I mean, honestly, there have been so much effort put on breeding walkers when people d- did go to them. You know. Gonna have to be a lot of mistakes made before before anything else that puts them aside, you know. And the bulk of people are gonna have to make it. Was anyway. well, that Tennessee lead dog? The, well, he was like the first, they say he was like the first walker or something, wasn't he? That Tennessee lead story, I believe, about as much of that is, you know, they, they want you to believe that the Tennessee lead story was where all the walkers come from. I never heard of Tennessee Leeds like a hundred year old, and, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, and I, I'm not saying I mean, he might have did some good walkers, but man, they've been so many places, and 
and, and early papers were changed around and left around. They, they don't they don't know what they don't know what they've done. Mine a long way to prove it, but I know what it was what, you know. I know yeah. which one of them was dead and which one's a mama from the first old queen on. And uh, but then when they went to DNA that that hit it. That hit it. Avery, how close was uh repeat the night you shot that coon out to that puppy and that other dog? How close was repeat treed to us? Oh, just across the holler. I mean you can see him just <laughs> That's I mean, I'd say Hear those say road out there somewhere. He was he he was right there, and he could see the he could see him fighting the yeah, coon. That's right. And he 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 stayed right there and talked he, to him. He never moved. Hey, we got his picture there somewhere. Yeah, there he is, all right on the door right there. What about the other breeders? What like you name some names, and I know you don't want to like names, but a breeder like yourself. What was one or two of the most enjoyable that you like to sit down with? And talk about breeding dogs. You know, I I kind of different from a lot of folks, but I I, I enjoyed Brother Tim Ball. I, you know, just times I'd around him and with him, and I bred. I, I wore my vehicle out, going out there to breed to the first old Harry. And if he got you one pup, you was proud. But uh, anyway, uh, he uh, I I enjoyed Brother Tim and uh, something else. The dogs he knowed and bred and stuff were just about, you know, they were across the fence from, there weren't a lot of them around here. And, and, you know, I never hunted a lot of them and stuff. And I, I enjoyed him a lot. And uh, Mac, when I could keep him straight, uh, <laughs> he, you know, he was, uh, Mac, he was, he was always on high on what he had, you know, of course, but me and him argued a lot. And Joe. When he was sober, Joe was, I enjoyed Joe House, and, and I always thought Joe was honest, even though he was reckless, but I, I thought he was always pretty honest. Really. And a few times I got to talk to Hershberger, a few times I got to talk to him, I really enjoyed it, because I think he was an honest man. And that's, you know, it just, other than that, you know, the local input has been, been real good to me, too, you know, and the first old gentleman I started hunting with, I had to get over a few of his things. He he had an idea too that I don't go along with. But so so not to not to brag, you know, I don't want you to think you're bragging on yourself. But when did it become bigger than Pontotoc, Mississippi? Uh, the Childers boys, J. E. Childers, yeah, you know, J. E. Hunted Schooner River Lipper for me, and that really that really got me in Louisiana. I did a lot of dog business down there, you know, breeding and other for a long time, and uh, and 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 G probably, you know, he helped me much in the earlier days, and then Mark, Joe, and all them boys down there, they they did a lot with them, and uh, in uh, later years, well, I wouldn't say later years, but later uh, the Rogers boys out in Missouri, Steve and Darren. And they're two boys. They really, really put in that a lot. And, and re- really, really, he's talking about Homer's Gomer. Uh, mouth. Gomer done a lot for me in Alabama. Everybody, want, everybody wanted a dog with a mouth like Gomer's. And that was a measuring stick. And, and you know, everything will know if I had a puppet that have a mouth like Gomer's. And uh, in which you could pretty well answer no and be right. But uh, he really done a lot for me there. And different ones over over the country, you know. They they the trouble the thing is, is uh, most of them come. I'm older, and most of them are older. And uh, and it's like uh, Mark Mark knows now that I don't, I don't want to do no dog business. I, I mean, you know, I I, I just buy them shoot one is trying to sell it because I don't I don't I don't relate to. What, what the younger uh, the first thing uh, one asked me if he wants to get on my list is how deep and wide will he go by himself uh, you know I don't I, I can tell him quick I don't know, <laughs> you, know so, but, and you don't want to find out man, neither, I, I'm not planning on finding out <laughs> you want to count coons not miles uh, I, 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 I'm too old for them miles so uh, did you ever hunt with House's lawyer? no, no? I was going to see if he thought he was lighter than Gomer uh, Medley hunted him a lot, and he he said he's awful loud. You said he you said he was awful loud. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. Lawyer was a red alert. He was yeah. he was absolutely a loud <laughs> tree dog. Did they have him in the south? Down here somewhere was that lawyer? They had Jackson around Jackson or somewhere. Did he? 
Uh, no, Mr. James Lofton had houses Hank down there for a while. Okay. Well, that, when he got a little older, he had Hank. I, I, I knew they had some house. Yeah, down houses down Hank he had Jackson down there. I, I couldn't remember what it was. I guess we're probably, we ain't long going to be wrapping this up. We ain't near about shine this tree. That's what's crazy. Sure. You know what I mean? We just kind of scratched the surface. Up. Hey, we might have to come back. We might I have had to come a large back. Time. We've, Man, we've I had a too. good meal, good fellowship. We went by where Mr. Wimp was raised in uh, Schooner <laughs> River. We went over Schooner River. We've covered, we've covered a few miles, and uh, was, I can see us coming back. This gal that does PKC youth hunts, I can't ever think of her name. Amy Thomas. Yeah. Oh, she did an interview on me one day, uh, and she was talking about Schooner River, Schooner River, and uh, and you see how big it was up there. Yeah. And uh, somebody wanted to know if I'd heard anything from that, and I said, yeah, man, I met a man there an hour ago, I don't know where Schooner River was, he wanted to put his houseboat in. <laughs> 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 I tell you, uh, first day I'd ever run on Schooner River Lipper. Well, like the same thing as that big tree you see up there between them two yes, dogs. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Use that picture. And uh, and somebody called me and said to some of my buddies around him. Well, no, said, if you got any calls on your ad? Said, I see it in the magazine. I said, yep, got 25. Said, sure enough. I said, yep. Said, that's pretty good, ain't it? I said, man, yeah. He said, he said well, I was always asking about him. I said, one of them won't know what my dog done, and 24 of them won't know where that big, timber company won't know where that big tree was. Yep. <laughs> 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 That's something else. That really I don't know what we got the tree left that big now or not. <laughs> that's that's big. Well, Mr. Wimp, we gon' you going hunting night, ain't you? Yeah, we me and I you're gonna go after a while. Well, I know Tyler's gonna close it out, but I just wanna say thank you, Mr. Wimp. We've had a big time. The good Lord's blessed us with a good time to be together and uh, catch up on your story and I know we've enjoyed well, it. Well, I, I hope somebody enjoys it. I, you know, as I see it, it's 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 all uh Really, really, you know, as the people I met and the people I know and, and that thing, that's, that's it with me now. You know, I, I'm going to try to keep a dog with a tree of coon as long as I can go coon on. Might keep me a pet thereafter if I can't get But uh, I, I might if I get out and hunt with some more dogs, you know, I might want to move. Might want to move what I got. You might want to get you a hot nosed, deep and lonely dog, huh? <laughs> I think that's what Queen yeah. 17 should be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you think that fit him more? I tell you, I tell you what, I'm thinking about Bark being the daddy of it. Uh, <laughs> I like to say that. Yeah. F- Fifteen. Both, she'll strike more coons than anything we got, and she'll most of the time be in the length of this building that we run them roads. And I've seen her strike a number of coons. And you see them going the other night. I, I, I look at my thing. She was out to the right there. And uh, Ricky said the little old cookie chip we got said said cookies 300 something yards on up the road and about that time quick screamed and i looked and she was 28 foot from the truck we stopped and she was just right out to wonder and she screamed another time through a tree on a bush and his coon running around in that bush up there the rest of them done went by <laughs> mr will you showed me a carbide light that you used to coon hunt with and now you telling me about a garment it's come on <laughs> you operating a garment so you've hunted with carbide lights and now you're hunting with a garment well it is a little move but uh oh i finally had to get one ronnie davis he 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 had the first one that i hunted with and he was spending time on his uh, what's you avery grinning over there he said Spent time telling me where old Hobo was, old Switcher out the creek he was on. And I think, man, I, I, I wish he'd lose that thing. And uh, But I finally had to get one. And they're they're nice, they're nice for, especially me, I can't hear good and I can't walk much. And, and uh, I can tell how my dog barking at the tree if I, even if I can't hear it, you know. And uh, they're, they're nice, they, they really are. But they, uh, but they've come a long way since, I forget to put the first shock and color I ever had. It wouldn't work out of sight. They've come a long way since then. Another thing I don't think people consider, you know, is how much the Garmin and all has helped us be able to train dogs. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, 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 you, you, as you get used to them, you couldn't hardly hunt without them. You know, I, I have left mine at home. Don't do it very often, but sometimes. <laughs> Anthony, I left mine at home one night, and I never did tell him I left it because they leave yours about half the time, you know. And I get on with that. 
But uh, kind of like you ain't got no shirt pocket when you ain't got it. It's, yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, I, 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 anybody have a specialist on them? <laughs> no, sir. Huh? I don't know. No, sir. Mark's the best we got. Mark's the best around here. Hey, I have to get one of them young boys with me. Get Mark to tell you. I called him one morning at two o'clock, and he was, uh, he was, <laughs> no, uh, he's down the delta, and he's done in a cabin asleep. And I finally got him browsed up, and he had to get up. It's cold. He had to get up, go out to the truck to get his garment to tell me. I wouldn't know how to turn the light on on it. I'd forgot. I had to go out there and get it, do it. And, and he had to go I get it. I could just tell him I'd do it. I had to have the garment. And, and you know what? We had looked for that dog an hour. I mean, that rat, she's right here. No, she's three foot over there. She's two foot over there. No, she's back over here. We went around in there, picked up every stick, looked in every place. It could have been a hole. And I found about for an hour. And and we couldn't find her. And the thing said she's right couch on her. You don't but come back. But they had done one shot a coon out. And uh, she and, didn't come back to the truck. Then. And uh, and the other dogs they done caught a coon. And and he brought them back to the truck and didn't bring that one. And I could tell all the time it's that one's still over there, you know. So we went over there and I crawled across the creek and got over there and we looked and looked and looked. And an hour, I called Mark and I turned the light on. And you know where she was. Up a stupid tree right over us. Oh my goodness! And that tree wasn't more than that stupid. And and we looked up the tree, but uh, it, it wasn't uh, saved her life. It, it, it uh, but uh, it, it, if I don't I don't think she'd ever. If I had to shock her to make her come, and she fell and hit on a tree, and it didn't hurt her. But uh, oh, but she was she was right up that tree. I don't know why I could turn my light on today if I needed to. I don't do it regularly, you know. <laughs> I ain't the most gifted fellow with this late model stuff. One thing I, I, I don't really worry about it much. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and another thing is it just it's just it's been it's they manufactured it since my day. Uh, the first interview that we did didn't work out, you know, over the phone. It, we did it and the audio was terrible. Yeah. And you know what? That was a blessing because I have enjoyed coming down I here, and too. I really have. I've enjoyed seeing all this, and I'm 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 glad that the audio didn't work out on the first one, even me though it too. took a lot of time for we us. We went and to man, Amish country and everything. We went to Amish. I mean, man, I mean, we have went everywhere, and it's you know that we got to tour Schooner River Bottom, right? We went, and and I thank you for that, Mr. Wimp, and I really do, Mr. Wimp, and I I just I can't thank you enough, man, for oh, man, letting I, us come. I, 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 Appreciate you coming, glad, glad you come. If you don't do nothing, it's on my mind. I want to get up. You just gonna get that garment? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, Mr. Wimp, we probably we gonna have to be back. We gonna have to come back and uh. But I do, like I said, I do appreciate it, Mr. Wimp. Yeah, yeah, come back anytime. I really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you like what you heard here, go on over to Facebook. Give us a like, at Coon Hunting U. Also, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.